everything Chris everything Chris everything Chris everything 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 Chris everything Chris everything Chris everything everything Chris people <clears throat> more man Talk us how, what magic did you get Justin in? What was the magic to get Justin Robinson to London Lions, man? <laughs> Didn't think I'd see that day. As a Brixton alumni, you know, even while back in Hemel days and, and Milton yeah. Keynes, right up to London, I would always say to Jimmy, hey, Jimmy, you know, which of the young guys is ready to come? You, you know, who, who's ready? Who, you know, who's not going to the States? Who's ready, you know? And over the years, I had several guys play with me, you know. I remember Adju, Adju, Adju Deng, Luol's brother, played for us a little bit in, yeah. in Watford. Um, Kojo, Kojo Mensa Bonsu played for us. Yeah. In, in, um, I think, uh, Marcus, Marcus, Marcus Knight played for us in Milton Keynes. Oh, okay. The big bro, my big bro, yeah. <laughs> so, so, all the guys that we brought from Brixton. So, obviously, everybody knew about Justin. So, I'm talking to Justin. I mean, while I'm at it, obviously, Matthew, Matthew Bryan played for us for a hot minute, you know, when we first yeah. moved into the club. But with Justin, it was different. You know, Justin was an established player in Europe. You know, part of my goal was how do we get these guys, better British players, to come and play at home, you know? Um, so it was important to identify London guys who wanted to be home, great quality players. Um, we spoke to Justin two or three years before he came, you know, kept telling him about what we were doing, kept um, updating him on the progress and how we were doing. Okay, okay. Eventually, you know, he, 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 he thought, okay, you know what? especially with the family growing and wanting to be close to the kids and everything else. I think he took that opportunity at that time and said, yes. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, you know, we've been not, no turning back since that time. <laughs> yeah. Knowing Justin as well, we both know him. He's one of those people who's just, he's honest and he's real. So as long as you show him that, you're, as long as you show him what's going on and he sees it, he can see something in it. You know what I mean? He's, he's, well, of course, you know, and we know, you know, we know we're not football and we're not rugby and we're not cricket yeah. and we're not, going to be bumps along the road, you know, and you've got to understand where people are coming from and where we're trying to go to. You know, we can't we can't be knocked off course by the bumps, but we just have to deal with them, you know, and as long as people yeah. understand that, there's a way to go. That's exactly it, man, exactly. And it's been great, you know, him coming back to London, it's been a great turnaround for the franchise. He's done so well. In the first year, he became MVP and then and also he won, you know, became third in the league. Second. Uh, Second, sorry, in the first season he came, second in the league. Yeah, yeah. And then next season you win the title, the league yeah. title. How was that whole season for you? Because for me, that was um, a big moment for me, for myself as a fan, seeing that after 20 plus years, we finally, yeah. London, won the league. And like, it was amazing. Was, you know, on, on many fronts, that was huge. Because first of all, you know, that was a very London-based team. Yeah. You know? Apart from um, Brandon Peel, Herbert <coughs> Brist, and L uh, Ladarius Tab, everybody's from London. Yeah, you know, so the atmosphere, <coughs> the unique, you know, you know, with Justin, with Flo, with Jarrell Coro, with Abe, Paul Guid, you, you know, the vibe yeah. was unbelievable. We, we had so much fun. That, you know, we, we were doing the business, but we had so much fun way, you know, and and Justin's level of professionalism um, kept on pushing us. You know, but I thought the vibe and the understanding that we had between us was great. Uh, it was really yeah. enjoyable that year. <laughs> I loved it as well. I came to some of those games, and I loved it as well. Even the coach, down to the assistant coaching as well, with the help of <clears throat> Andrea, uh, Laurent, yes. you um, know, Andre, Mikel. Dave, you know, Nick, I mean, obviously, Nick, Nick and Andrea, obviously from Brixton also. You know, Dave, we now had Dave on board with us as well. <clears throat> he was head at the university. So yeah, you know, yeah. we had... Dave, Dave yeah. yeah talent on and off the floor you know we prepared very well for the games um yeah, it was it was interesting you know it was, it was a it was a nice team effort you know considering who was actually with us all the people that we had you know <laughs> you know, the funniest coach in the league apparently someone this just says no i love that team man it was it was it was one of my favorite that was obviously it was my favorite team i was supporting them all the way so you know i traveled to go see that team and so it was it was one of my favorite. Um, yeah, I mean, I love watching you not play. There was a lot of things with that team, you know, like 
you know, with Ladarius Stav and the way he plays, you know, explosive around the Oh, my God. And, you know, when we, 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 he came, he joined us. We had a preseason friendly at uh, Brentwood with the Leopards. Yeah. And uh, there had been some problem with the flight and all that. So he arrived that morning. So we were playing some of the qualifying games while he was sleeping in the, ble in the bleachers. <laughs> you know, and then it's like, yo, you, you know, you've watched about three or four games. You need to yeah. start playing. So we warmed him up, went out for the first warm up in the game. And he took off from somewhere. It's like, holy <laughs> Christ, look at this guy, you know. And he, he didn't look back from there on in, you know. Uh, um, how was he? How was he that when you first when you first met? What was your first impressions of that, that Darius Tam? When... That's it. That was the first. That, that, that was the first one, yeah. yeah because I'd recruited him. We watched yeah. him on tape. Uh, he was sensational on tape. Um, and then he came, you know, sleepy and everything. And yeah, we're like, yeah, yeah. well, you, we, you know, we're not, we, we know that. Look, you recruit the guys. Yeah. You know, yeah. I had to go to the stadium. Sometimes I go over there and we look at them at the camp, but we had to recruit him from tape, you know, games, talking to his ex-coaches. So we thought we had the right guy. Bearing in mind, by the way, he'd missed the flight. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm always pissed when the players miss the flight because it's like, mm, okay, let's check him out. But when once he took off and threw down the first tomahawk, we were off and running and he didn't yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> what about um, Brandon Pugh? Well, Brandon something else. You know, Brandon is something else. You know, Brandon, um, after finishing school, um, yeah, yeah. Brandon didn't get a job, you know. So he was working as, as a nursery school teacher in, okay. in D.C., you know. So he hadn't got a job. My ex-player, Nuno, who's an agent now, he, he said, Vince, take a look at this guy. I do think there's something there. I don't know why people are overlooking him, you know. So I took a look, and I'm looking at this guy. I'm thinking, Jesus, look at this guy. Longest <laughs> arm, 6'8", John shoots. And he just reminded me so much of uh, Charles Smith from okay. Newcastle. You know, like a young version of Charles Smith because he could do everything. So I, um, I spoke with him and, and he was really keen to start his career. Now, the first year he came, I was in coaching. Coach Mario was coaching, you know. And okay. I'll tell you a funny story about Brandon. We went to, our first yeah. season was in Poland. We went to yeah. Poland. <laughs> and we played all these games in Poland. And I think Justin said, Vince, this guy is not going to make it. I said, which guy? <laughs> he said, Brandon. I said, what do you mean? He said, we've been here three days. He hasn't eaten. He hasn't eaten. <laughs> oh, I, I said, what do you mean? He said, Vince, he hasn't eaten. So, <laughs> I said, so me, Justin, and Joe went to see, went to see Brandon. Like, Brandon, what's the problem? And he's like, coach, you know, this food in Poland is kind of funny. You know, I don't know. <laughs> well, look. <laughs> You've been here three days. We played three games, and you haven't eaten. You're gonna die, you know. So from then on, he started eating. I was okay, but unfortunately, Coach Mario didn't get on with it. Didn't really play him much, you know. Uh, I think it was eight to ten minutes a game. And then when I took over in January, I had no choice but to play. I only had six players after the yeah, other. Yeah. And from then, there was no turning back. The guy is a sensational player, you know. <laughs> You're not eating though, man. That's a story. I've heard some stories on these talks, man. That's got to be one of the top three I've heard so far, man. Oh, you didn't yes. eat for three days. <laughs> That's a good It wasn't oh. fashion, whatever it was they eat over there, you know? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Talking of Newcastle, how was that like in that moment there when you won the title in Newcastle and when that game where Justin just went Ballistic, he, he just annihilated them. He was just like he just came in and said, "I'm taking this title. No one's gonna stop me." You know that was that, that was an interesting time. So obviously, if you remember, we, we should have won it the, the day before, the Friday. Yeah, before, yeah, against the Cheshire Phoenix, <laughs> but they were trying to stay in the playoffs. So, so it was. So it was <laughs> um, it's sad because you know my, my mom was seriously ill. My mom was living in the states. You know. And I needed to go over. So I said to the guys before the Cheshire game, I'm like, guys, I, you know, I need to get over. So let's win this game so I can go. But we lost the game. So they're like, are you going? I said, well, I've booked my flight for the morning after the Newcastle game. So we don't lose. I'm out of here. You know? yeah. So we got, got a nice trip up there. And before I left, actually, I, um, I put on my bar I have a Barbados T-shirt that Nigel yeah. gave me. you know, And I got on the bus. And then... Um, Andre said, oh, okay, it's over now then. Because he was like, once I saw the Barbados t-shirt, I yeah. knew we were good. So we got down there. 
you know, Newcastle, they were a bit disjointed that year, or yeah. they had good talent. You know, they had good talent, but they were disjointed. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course, we were all a bit nervous. You, you know, we're trying to win the title. I, I, was, yeah, I was nervous for you like, as well. I was like, we need to win this. I was like, please. <laughs> Everybody was a bit nervous. So we started the game kind of shaky. And we got about, I think we got about, I want to say, six or seven minutes into the first quarter. And I'm thinking, man, this isn't going right. So I made a decision. I don't know who I pulled out. It might have been Ladarius or somebody. I pulled him out and I put in Jonathan James. Now, yeah. you might know Jonathan James, right? He went to Hackney with us, young kid. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Opportunity, you know? You know, John James went off. He scored nine points in the first quarter and got us on our way. And then Justin took over. And then, uh, you know, we brought the shiny pot with us. <laughs> the rest was history, but I was like, please do not win this. Funny enough, I was at the Bristol versus Royals game that day. You lot won the title because you lot, I was at Bristol versus Royals, yeah. Okay, you got the you got the short end of the straw then. <laughs> yeah, so I was, I was like, that game. They won that game, but I got the news on my phone. I was like, yes, that was it. We won it, we won it, we won it. Definitely, <laughs> man. That was a great moment, man. That was a great moment for London. And obviously, the next season, you was... Obviously, this season was getting even better, but yeah, this obviously with the COVID. Yeah, COVID cut it short, but we were right where we thought we were going to be. You know, we, we had a couple of slip-ups on the game. Um, I mean, I think, I mean, we all agree now, I think that and Justin actually had COVID. That's why he didn't play that uh, that game against... Um, oh, really? I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah, against um, Sorry, The game we lost against Sorry. you know. Um, oh, he didn't play that game, did he? No, no, you know... Um, because you know, we, we looked at the schedule from that point and we thought, okay, actually, I think we had Leicester, sorry, somebody else, somebody else. And we thought we could win all the way through, you know. Um, I know you've got Coach Paternostro coming in at four, so in case he's watching, just to say, you know, that was a 34-point blowout. But, you know, um, he's going to have to win. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> to, sorry, on the road. Otherwise, we'd have been obviously tied up top there. But we you know we we had the head to head with uh, with Glasgow, uh, yeah. and we thought we could do it again. You know, which can you imagine doing it again? Maybe Justin gets MVP for the third time. That oh, would that would be momentum. That would be a momentum for Great Britain, definitely for British basketball. So that would that would be great. Um, you, one more one. Uh, so many of the younger players are here now. A lot of the British guys want to yeah. go home. You know, we had Ovi this year. I mean, who knows who we're going to have next year? So okay, I was going to ask about that. I was going to ask about Ovi. How did that come about, man? How did how did you get him over here? That was another one. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, we didn't. I mean, um, obviously, with with his success on Love Island, um, yeah. you know, he, he probably had to stay in in, in uh, London to take advantage of some of the opportunities. He had some super duper opportunities, you know. Fair so enough, I got a yeah. call out in the summer. I was in India uh, last summer, and I got a phone call from his agent saying, "Look, he's going to be in London. You know, we want to play." Um, <clears throat> so, you know, let's, let's see what we can do. So we're able to put a deal together. We couldn't get him as early as we'd like because there was a few things going on, but we, we got him for some games. Um, and, and it was great to have him with us, you know, another veteran guy, another guy who's done it all. Um, and he brought again some more toughness to what we were trying to do. Um, yeah. yeah. And obviously he brought a lot of new people to the game. Oh, he was a yeah. fan. Strong, strong dude as well, man. Oh. Strong dude. <laughs> <laughs> I said this the other day. You know, you know when we do our uh, team intros and all the guys are all doing all this. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, you think we all high five? You know, we're trying to get out the way. Because this <laughs> <high> five <bully. laughs> I, I shaved his hand once and it, I thought he crushed my hand. I was like, yeah. So like, how you doing, man? I, uh, yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> Bro, guys made a lot of steel, you know. Oh my gosh, he is so strong. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Everything, everything. Everything Chris. Everything Chris. Everything Chris. Everything, everything Chris.